Menyai Isaac Rose Juicy Wall. A Chef Juicy presentation. Tonight's feature will be Bike Paprikash and Cottage Cheese Noodles. Chukapurka Turos Chusawa. Welcome to the House of Taos. My name is Chef Juicy. You know, the other day I went out to Lake Simcoe to do a little bit of fishing and looks like the patron saints of fishermen, namely Saint Andrew and Saint Neptune, were very much in good moods because they allowed me to pull out a couple of huge bikes out of the lake. And of course now I want to show you how to make a fantastic Hungarian dish called Chukopirkuk, Pike Paprikash, along with a nice side dish of Turos Chusa, which is cottage cheese noodles. I'm sure you will find it very simple to prepare, yet very delicious. So sit back and enjoy. Well, what would be the main ingredient for a good Pike Paprikash? Of course, freshly caught Pike. I feel it mine. Hey, here we go. Now, this is a generous kilo, and uh, with this, we'll actually feed about uh, four to six people. The other protein ingredient is nice bacon. Look at this nice double smoked bacon. I will be cutting this up into small pieces, actually, little strips. Fry them up with the onions. We have to have some garlic to go with it. Never leave garlic out of anything. Garlic makes your hair nice and shiny, and also it's good for COVID social distancing. And I'm going to use a little bit of pork fat to put under the bacon to fry it up nice and crisp. And uh, you can use canola oil if you want. And far as the spices are concerned, uh, we're going to have to have, of course, nice Hungarian paprika. I use the mild version of it, Edesh Nemesh. You can put a little bit of extra spice in it, extra kick in it, and I will do that with a Hungarian nice kotani chili. Also, we're gonna use a little bit of salt, and of course, white pepper. And you know what? That's all we really need for a wonderful, delicious dish. So allow me to prepare these things, cut everything up into pieces, the vegetables and the meat and the uh, bacon, and I'll be right back. You can see everything is nicely cut up. So we're gonna start with a little bit of lard. As I said, you can use uh, canola oil if you want this to be sort of uh, um, animal fat free. But I prefer pork fat. There we go. Uh, this would be probably uh, a large tablespoonful. And of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the bacon first. We're gonna render the bacon. Uh, get all the, uh, the fat out of it. Well, it looks like our bacon is getting to be nice and happy in here. It's bits and pieces are turning sort of reddish, has a nice color on them. Add in the onions now. The onions have been sort of finely chopped. Not too fine, but, you know, chunks like this. And we're gonna give this a stir. And on, low, on medium heat, we're gonna let this go until the onion becomes translucent. Again, we're adding the flavors one layer at a time. Uh, what you can do now is you can add in the garlic. I didn't want to add the garlic earlier because it burns and gets bitter. There we go. And we give that a stir again. And we let this go for another two, three minutes at the most. And then we go to the next layer of flavors. Ooh, have a look. See, this is all beautiful now. The onions and the bacon and the garlic and oh, it has such a lovely aroma. Now, 
uh, I forgot to tell you, but uh, some tomato paste also has made its way into the recipe. And now it's here it is. So we'll put that in there. Give it a swift uh, blending. And uh, the next item in the flavor matrix equation is we're going to put the Hungarian paprika on it. Now, before we do that, I'm going to turn the uh, induction uh, hot plate off so the paprika doesn't burn. But because it's miscible in fat rather than in an aqueous solution, uh, we'd like to put the paprika into the oil, onto the onions and garlic. There we go. Uh, be generous with it. Ah, what the heck, why not? Whole thing. All right. Now you can see that the paprika gets dissolved nicely in the, in the fat and becomes like a creamy uh, melange here. Okay, so we turn the heat back on and then once it comes up to temperature, slowly we're going to add in about one liter of water. So here we go, just a little at a time. Then mix it in. Ah, see, this becomes a nice and pasty consistency. We add a little bit more into it. And don't forget at that time we can also add some salt. Uh, and some white pepper. I like white pepper with fish. I think that should be enough. If I was to add all the cold water into this immediately, all in one fell swoop, then what would happen is the paprika would actually and the oils in there, the fats in there, would separate out and have these floating little islands uh, that uh, would make it look kind of uh, uh, hmm, not so appetizing. There you go, see? Now, we just want to make sure that we only add enough water that would barely cover the fish. Now, let me give it a try. Mm -hmm. Well, it might need a little bit more salt. Salt is very good for your blood pressure, don't forget. Good thing I didn't become a doctor. <laughs> and at that time too, again to layer the flavors, we're gonna add a little bit of uh, a chili pepper in here, or you can use hot uh, Hungarian paprika. Okay, so now it's time to add the fish in. Whoops. Well, most of it should go inside the pot, not outside. After that, you have to be very careful in stirring it because otherwise you're going to break the fish into little pieces. We're not making a smoothie here. Let me put it that way. Now we can give this a taste to see how the spicing is. Oh, fantastic. Now, if you want the sauce to be, or the juice, to be a little bit thicker, then what you can do is take a small spoonful of cornstarch, mix it up with some cold water, and pour it into the uh, chuka paprika. For the two roast juice of the cottage cheese noodles, we're going to use uh, these flat noodles that I got uh, uh, from an ethnic Hungarian store. Now, 
If you can't find these, don't worry. You buy some lasagna noodles, but make sure you buy the ones that have egg in it. So we're going to put these guys into here, and then we're gonna boil this. Okay. For the cottage cheese, it's important to buy a good so-called baker's cottage cheese because this is not runny. This is 0.8% butter fat. I'm telling you, this is the right thing to buy. Don't buy the 10% one, and also don't buy the uh, ones in the tub because that's just gonna run all over the place and you won't get the same results. Also with the sour cream, you have to be careful. Read the ingredients. If there are ingredients in there that you can't pronounce, then don't buy it. Buy the one that just have bacterial culture and milk products in it, and that's it. So we can add in the noodles. This is, there we go. Okay. Gently boil for about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. We'll check it to see when it's going to be al dente. In order to uh, avoid the uh, noodles from sticking together, some people actually add a little bit of uh, some sort of fat in there, uh, be it oil, or be it lard in my case. I decided to uh, cut up my uh, bacon. Now I cut it up into approximately one centimeter cubes. If you're imperially inclined, then do half an inch, okay? Let me just see. Mm, this is good, yes. It's also time to crumble up the cottage cheese. You see, this is nice and dry. It has this nice dry texture. Now, there you go. Now that's going to go on to the, uh, the pasta once it's ready. Okay, so let's see if the noodles are cooked. Fish one out here for, uh, for myself without burning. Hey, You know what? Judging by the color, it's al dente. It has sort of the right mixture of white and sort of yellowish uh, tinge. Mm, it's perfect. Now it's okay, I drained it. Uh, I left it in the colander and some water is still dripping down. We don't leave it as it is. We we'll put it to the side and now we can do the bacon. It's warm. Okay, so we we'll put the pork fat in it, which has partially melted already in the heat of the kitchen, in the heat of the excitement. Okay, there we go, and then we're gonna put in the bacon cubes. Now, we're going to have to do this relatively slowly because we don't want to burn it, but also we want to make sure that the fat is rendered out of it. Slowly, but surely, it's getting there. Look at that, it's getting nice and red already. So let it go for a little bit. These guys look absolutely perfect now. Nice and brown. Most of the fat is rendered out of it. So we're going to save the uh, bacon bits on one side. There we go. And that's going to go on top of the noodles once uh, uh, the cottage cheese is added to it. Uh, then we have our pasta. Now, I forgot to tell you something. Once you drain the pasta in the colander, make sure you rinse it with cold water to wash the starch off otherwise they'll get stuck together again. So, now we have the oil nice and hot. Well, why don't I just even crank up the temperature all the way to maximum. There we go. And then we're gonna put the pasta onto the rendered bacon fat. There we go. And with the aid of a spoon, do is we're going to put the cottage cheese on it. And I'm using about 250 grams of the cottage cheese, half a package. If it's not enough, you can always add more to it. Okay, I'm going to remove the heat. 
open the sour cream and add oh I don't know but this much to it half a tub I'd say again this is a half a liter tub so put half of it in there again we're gonna blend it in very nicely but you know what um, actually what a lot of people do is uh, uh, they take this they put it into a baking dish or something like this then they put it into the oven and they have the uh, put a little bit of uh, sour cream on top they put it into the oven put on broil for about five ten minutes and it looks absolutely beautiful like that now as far as I'm concerned this is ready I'm going to uh, get me a fork and I'm going to give it a try give it a taste see if it's good if it's no good I will order a pizza mmm call off the pizza this is good and of course this is what we've been waiting for the plating we take some of this wonderfully rich cottage cheese noodles with lots of sour cream on it. Look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. Take a spoonful of that, put it over here, maybe a little bit more, eh, not too much. Hey, don't forget this is diet food. Be careful, don't eat too much of it. Okay, and then we're going to put the little bit of a pike paprika on. Oh look at the nice piece of fish. See it didn't fall apart. Nice and nicely cooked but they are still all intact. Put a little bit over here, a little bit of a juice on it. And then we put the bacon bits, bacon cubes onto the pasta. Uh, manually helping of course and then we put a couple of tomatoes for decoration for our little salad because don't forget you have to eat your greens uh, there we go one more over here and the last one over here aha now I'm gonna taste A little bit of sauce on there for first. Wake me up. This is like a beautiful dream. Oh, and look at the fish. Look at the fish. It's not overcooked. It's nice, it's still flaky, and it's fresh. Not frozen. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you Pike Paprikash, Chuka Perkut, Eshturos Chusa, Cottage Cheese Noodles. I hope you enjoyed making it and I hope you enjoy eating it as well. Until next time, you wait like a Timanok. Bon appétit.